about oh, my grand my dad's a little <laughs> bit of a we were I was in the station wagon <laughs> facing backwards, you know, in that back seat. Uh -huh. And my mom has terrible gas. Oh goodness. And my dad pulled over on the side of the road and he was like, Hey, you gotta get out and walk that off. <laughs> so he he <laughs> You made her walk he up and down the freeway, the Mass Pike, dude. Made her walk oh, the up and down. the freeway? <laughs> that's a, that's she, a bad shit. She was Literally. like, what do you want me to do? He was like, I don't know. Just walk it off walk until it it's out. But we can't. Oh, that's yeah, cold. Yeah, it, was, that's, it, it was that <laughs> bad. Is not Tom, Tom Wolf is kind of a menace. I'm not going to lie, but I love him. Hey everybody! Uh, welcome to Hey Man. I am Josh. I am Jacob. Hey man. Hey man. Um, so today we have our second guest ever on the podcast. The first pot, first guest was my dad, and you guys loved it so much. And all the questions we asked about his childhood and how he parented us and all that stuff, we have decided to branch out. We now have our second podcast guest. We are so excited. We're here in Nashville to. Uh, Welcome, my friend, Caroline Bryan. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Thank you for being here. We were just Thank chatting a little bit yes, we beforehand. Mm -hmm. It's so fun that you came and you weren't sure what we were going to talk about. Yeah. I love that about you. Oh, no. I mean, well, I'm never scared with you anyway. But yeah. No, but yeah, I just I just go with it. I, I So I just want you to know that we're just going to talk about your childhood right. and, and some fun stories. When I talk about how oh, I Lord. grew up, he's like... People back then were animals. And I'm like, yeah, we grew up differently than you. Yeah. I, I always tease them. I'm like, what was it like to grow up in a household where someone cared about your feelings? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> not my, <laughs> not I mean, really seems, my childhood. It, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It seems like you didn't care about your feelings either. You guys used to turn off the lights, go in your basement, and throw darts at each other. The 80s were a different time. Yeah. Yeah. That is just absurd. The 80s were a different time. But <laughs> I do I do like to start these off just mm -hmm. honestly by giving our guests a little bit of their flowers. I'm a person who believes that people deserve their flowers when they're alive, not when they're dead. Mm -hmm. So let me just tell you something real quick what I admire about you. Um, and uh, I told you a little bit earlier before the show, but, you know, watching you parent and also in the, you're in a certain status to stay relatable and to keep family first mm -hmm. and to show people, this is so important to me as, as a parent. I think people lose the, the fun part. It, it can be fun. It doesn't yeah. have to be. Like when you ask somebody to do their homework or to take a bath or you don't have to do it like take a fucking bath. Yeah. Sometimes you do. You do. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you do. But you can keep things fun. And I admire how much, how relatable you stayed, how grounded you are. It's what people are attracted to about you. I think that you are just, when they look at you, you're like, oh, I know that person. Mm -hmm. I have brunch with that person. I have mimosas with that person. And so, and the fact that you keep parenting, fun but still family first and it's clearly from everything that you put out the most important thing about you it's so cool to see so i just want to let you know i really do respect that about you and luke like mm -hmm. you both have really it's clear how important family is to you yeah did you grow up like that um well first of all i think the whole being being humble for us you know, I've, I've always said, like, you can either stay humble or life will, will humble you. And mm -hmm. life has, for years, through tragedies, has kept us humble. That's because you, you can have something. It can be gone in a second. So, but also our personalities, we thrive on sarcasm. I mean, you know, because yeah. sometimes it's the only way to get through a day is, Absolutely. To, is to try to have fun. And, but yeah, but my childhood, um, like you're like in the eighties, you know, I, there was either, you know, you go play outside and don't come in, you know, drink out of a hose. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what we did. Yeah. How do we how do we all not have rust on the inside of us from drinking out of those hoses in the back? I drank out of hoses when I was a kid. I'm gonna tell you right now, nothing hits harder on a summer's day than that ho that hose water. That hose uh -huh. water is comes out hard. Is yeah. different. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah, absolutely. Where did you grow up? I grew up in a very small town called Sandersville, Georgia. It's like in the heart of Georgia, middle, small town, but just a, a great city. 
um, so just very small town. So I was pretty sheltered. And, and then when I went to college, it was like, wow, I mean, yeah, but it was good. You know, I, both my parents work full time and uh, Luke, I mean, Luke gives me hell all the time because I'm always, I, I'm not a helicopter mom. I, sometimes I can be, yeah, but I do, I dote on, on my kids a lot because my, my mom, wonderful person, but she was never like, you know, oh, I love you. Hugs, hugs, hugs. That's just not her personality. Who was she growing up? Like what she? type of parent was she growing up? I mean, I think she just worked so hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was a therapist. I think she just worked all the time. And she, it, she had a rough childhood too. So her her mom wasn't doting at all. And so she didn't, I don't know if she didn't know how or just wasn't, wasn't in her, but I always craved like those hugs and like, I love you, back scratches. And so I overdo it with my children. So, so interesting. I don't know. You know, it's so interesting that you say that, like, cause it can go one or the other yeah. way, right? Mm -hmm. That I also, my dad was not an emotional, mm -hmm. I didn't really hear too much I love you until after his dad died. Yes. And so I hear it now, which is funny. I right. never really, heard, I knew they loved me. Like I never really heard it much as a child. And so I say it like all of our family, like every, every person in our family, we say it on the phone nonstop because, because of all of our losses. Like we know, you just don't know when the last time is. Yeah. yeah. So my family says, I love you. Not like nonstop. But, but I, I do the same thing with my buddies. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause we, we had a, in our friend group, we had a little bit of a tragedy happen a couple of years ago. So now every time I get off the phone with my friends, whether they're a guy, a girl, family, I always try to I make sure you. that the last words on the phone aren't love you by are just by love you. And I'm mm -hmm. saying love you to all my buddies, all my friends, anybody who I'm on the phone with. And I think it's important to make sure that that's what's heard. That's and what it takes that. It's, I mean, sometimes it takes a tragedy for friends. Like, you know, a lot of, my friends think it's so funny because Till is my nephew, but he's been with us since he was 13 because mm -hmm. he's lost his mom and his dad. And he calls me all the time and Till always says, all right, love you. And they're like, a 22-year-old is says, I love you every time. I'm like, yeah, that's our, our, our family does that to everybody. Right, right. I mean, he, he says it to his friends too. It's important. It's yeah. important. And I, I, there's not, I feel like I, I don't find, I feel like any other friend groups, there are other dudes I know and like not in our close mm -hmm. friend group. And when I, I hear them talk to their boys, like, all right, I'll catch you later. And I'm like, you guys, I know y'all love each other. Yeah. Y'all don't want to say you it. love each other. They're like, no, nah, it's weird. I'm like, it's only weird if you make it weird. Yeah. You're just telling your boy you love them. That's it. It's never. It's one of the reasons great. why I like giving people their flowers now. Mm -hmm. I want you to know what I think about you. Mm -hmm. I think it's important. Why am I waiting until you don't know how yeah. I feel about you? So or I don't. It's I'm too not, late. Yeah. It's yeah. definitely yeah. too late. Was your dad the same as your mom? Pretty much. Um, I mean. Yeah, I, he worked a lot too. I didn't see him. A what did ton. they do? What did they do? So my dad. So I'm from the Kaolin capital of the world, which uh -huh. is chalk. So he worked for the chalk mines. So he would either work twelve hour days or twelve hour nights mm. in the mines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, so either I wouldn't see him all day or all night, and then he would have to, you know, obviously have to sleep. But he's the sweetest, most loving human now. So it's amazing. It's amazing. I mean, he right? is the sweetest, most adorable, wonderful, loving human now. Your your kids' relationship with him is probably so different. Where you're completely like, different. where was this dude? Yeah, completely different. Did that? And you have a sister, yeah. I do. And did that make like that make your bond or your relationship with your sister closer? Well, my sister, she's the oldest, and she's three years older. So growing up. I, you know, she and I shared a bathroom. All we did was fight. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's just sisters fight, fight, fight. When I was in college and she was in and out of college, because that's my sister, yeah. we, we were very, very, very close. Yeah. Now, I've always been super close to my brother, Bo, who's the baby. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, he, I still see him or talk to him almost every single day. But I think Bo and I were the most affected with our childhood. Mm -hmm. So we always, you know, keep each other in check. And like, so, I mean, he dotes on his family. Like he's just a great dad and his wife is like the best human on this planet. So I think we both, I think we were more affected by growing up like that, that we're just 
all of our kids, you know, taking them. He, he takes his kids fishing, you yeah. know, hunting. And so we're we're really involved with our kids because I think we share that bond more. So how, how far in age are you and Bo? Like two and a half years. Two and a half years. So that was really more of just kind of the bond that you guys had growing up that really just kind of flourished as as you guys got older as well, right? Yes, but um, he and my dad were super close, like best friends from day one. Oh, growing up too. Oh, yes. growing up. Okay. So he and my dad were so close just because you know, it's a father son thing, yeah, and I was right. I was a little more detached from my dad because I was a girl. You know, I didn't go fishing or hunting much. I did some, but I was disruptive. So dad didn't want to take me back. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you were just Let me guess. He said you were scaring away the fish. <laughs> no, I would get bored or, or I'd want to jump in the lake or he'd take me hunting and I didn't want to, sh- I would scream. I didn't want anything to get shot yeah. or I was cold. <laughs> and he's like, and looking back now, I'm like, oh, my poor father. Like he's just trying to fish and hunt and he's tagging yeah. this, this little <laughs> asshole along. <laughs> I will tell you though, listen, I tried to duck hunt once. I'm like, what are we doing? It's wet, it's Isn't cold, it's and it's four in the morning. I, oh. that, God, oh. I said the same thing to Luke. I was well, like, and where am I going to pee? Yeah, what's There's the, in the ice? Yeah. I'm a girl. <laughs> I don't. I, I had a great time duck hunting with my Uncle Jace. No. It's so cold. Yeah, it was so much fun. The getting up at four in the morning, putting on 65 yeah, I'm not layers. Doing that. And then pushing a pushing that, a no. boat through the marsh and you're hip deep in mud. It's character building. I liked it. It was fun. Yeah, I it can character build somewhere else, not at four in the morning. <laughs> you know, <laughs> See, I'll go in, in the afternoon. Yeah, I'm not getting up at four in the morning Funny. unless I have to or it's a kid emergency. Yeah, yeah. no. D- did you? Okay, so were you? Since your mom and dad worked a lot, were you three at home a lot alone? No. Um. All throughout high school. Uh, um. I mean, I played sports all throughout high school, so it was uh, basketball. I did basketball and track, and then I think my senior year, I I played tennis, and that's when I learned I loved it, but I I didn't pick it up again until I had children. Yeah. But it was was school all day and some kind of practice until six or a game, and so go home, eat, homework, bed, same thing. How were you as a student? I was okay. You know, I could never do math, and I still can't. And so I tell my, and you know, now how they teach math is not how we learned. What do you mean? It's taught a completely different way. It's it's like looking at a foreign language. And how so can I, you teach it differently? It's they two teach plus two equals to, four, right? Now there's like bars and graphs and all this. I mean, uh, it's, I mean, it gives me acid reflux. Like yeah. I'm like, I can't help you with math. Like no. I can help you with English, whatever. But I was a good student. I always worked hard, but math was my Achilles heel. He is surprisingly a math whiz. This guy. Uh, I hate you. Like if I, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it. I still add on my fingers. Yeah, I can do it in my head pretty quickly. Yeah, and then but I, don't I, ask me like east, west, north, south. No. Nope. Well, don't ask me that. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe I wasn't yeah. a good student. <laughs> I, I used got to, by. Yeah, I used to go to my mom for everything else. Yeah. Any other subject, especially English, I would go yeah. to my mom because she was a writer. She's a writer. So yeah. I'd be like, hey, mom, can you can you proofread my essay, please? And it would come back and the whole page was in red. And I was like, "Ugh, I'm not even going to change that like that. That you pretty much just told me to rewrite the, the whole, whole entire thing. thing. She said, yeah. And I was like, I'm taking whatever grade they give. She me. knows too many words. Yeah. yeah, no. yeah. Like, I know. The teacher was like, I know this boy didn't know yeah. this yeah. word. What does superfluous mean? He's in second grade. Did he say benevolent? Yeah. <laughs> I'm befuddled. Yeah. Let me ask you something. So I tell him stories all the time about when I was growing up and he's like, I, kids just were, had so much more freedom mm-hmm. or he told you about the game. We used to throw darts at each other. <laughs> Can you think of something that you did growing up or games you played where if your kids did it, where you're like, I can't, I can't believe we li- survived that or any, anything like that? I mean, I still do stuff like that. I know but, you do. Um, <laughs> I like that energy. <laughs> but Well, the first thing that popped into my head was something I did. Oh my God. Do you remember go-karts? Yeah. yeah. Like we used to have, a, we used to have a go-kart. No At helmet. Your house? Did, yeah. And, I grew up was, in the country. Yeah. I love and, that. And it wasn't one, I had friends who built their own go-karts. It was a one-seater. Yeah. And this is back in the day, no helmets. <laughs> I mean, wide open. Oh my God. <laughs> no, no, my parents are idiots. I mean, <laughs> Can I ask you, do I you think, so and I've asked people this before, do you think they didn't know about safety or they just didn't care? I don't think anybody talked about yeah. it. And, yeah. you know, parenting now is like, oh, where, where are your pads? Where are your helmet? I yep. mean, and I totally get it. But 
one day I was riding the, um, and there was a small hill. And then we had like a little white fence that went in front of our house. And I guess at the time I was probably eight and I was bad. I was naughty, naughty, <laughs> naughty, naughty, naughty. I mean, naughty. Oh, so one day I'm flying on the golf cart <laughs> and my mom and dad had parked. And this all happened in one drive. My, my mom and dad had like a, her, her car, his truck parked. And I just want to fly through it. What's yeah. the difference? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, scrape both sides of the of the truck car. I turn around and I'm driving like, oh crap! I hit a hill, went straight through this fence <laughs> and run into our home. Put a hole. My mom's in the kitchen. I ran right into. And thank God it wasn't a brick home. It was like that, you know, yeah, siding. Yeah. And my mom sees me like. She sees her child driving, <laughs> and I going. go straight into the house, a huge hole in the house, and then I got caught on fire once. Wait, wait, hold what? on. This is a separate time? You did <laughs> yeah. what? Wait, so wait, you got yourself caught got caught on fire? Uh -huh. Okay, let's get into that well, real well, quick. Let me ask one <laughs> go-kart question first. I got in so much trouble. This is so funny, because at eight... First of all, can you? I can't imagine putting my kid in a go kart no, without a helmet. No. But it and it would fly. Yeah, they, they obviously weren't, they weren't doing two miles house. an hour. No. no, they were putting you in a car that a little car that went like a hundred cc's of just. Ving, 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 ving. I and mean, so, it had like some horsepower in it too. <laughs> I'd crank it, and it had that. It had oh, the, the crank. crank started? It had the oh crank. And I learned, and, and a kid had to crank it, like stand on it, crank oh, it, and I would some... take off. That like, is some country shit. Tell me I how you lit yourself that. on fire. Yeah, I oh, need to know that. I was, my mom was in the kitchen once again. <laughs> and we, you know, back then, like, I, you know, everybody has a fireplace. And so I took a roll of paper towels. I don't know why. And I was playing in the fire. Da, 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 da. Well, it caught on fire so big, it started to scare me. And so I started to like run and it was getting like on the back of my shirt. So all my mom saw was me screaming, running, like halfway on fire, holding <laughs> paper towels. She threw spoons and like tackled me. Like she, she was chasing. Spoons me. She you? was cooking. <laughs> yeah. She was like, she was cooking like some soup or something. Yeah. And all she saw was like blonde hair and fire, like on my, oh. like on my back, like not, not badly yeah. on my back, obviously. Yep. But me holding these paper towels, screaming. And so she ran and just jumped on me. And she's like, I fell through a pool once in freezing cold weather. Not sure how. Through a, like ice like or frozen like pool? The, the... I was walking on our pool cover that had oh, holes the, in it. Yeah. Fell through. There's just too much that. We I were so. Broke a glass door with a slingshot. I mean, there's just too much I've done. Wait, wait. Was I was it aiming for my mom's butt. Mm. No wonder my mom yeah. didn't say I love you a lot. <laughs> it's all. By the way, this podcast brought to you by Best Day Brewing. If you guys like beer and you like the taste of beer, uh, but you don't want to get drunk, this is the beer for you because there's no alcohol in this beer. Yep. But good Lord, it tastes good. And you know what noise it makes when you open it? I feel like you make that sound different every time. I might, but I love cracking open a can. I love sitting in the green room with you and drinking a beer, even though I don't drink anymore. So I can sit there and pretend like we are cracking one open together. Uh, but Best Day Brewing, guys, if you like the taste of beer and you like the taste of good beer, but you're not a drinker anymore, this is the joint for you. It's Were you the up. mischievous one? In yeah. The family? What I was the relationship am. between? So you weren't as close with your older sister, with your older sister. Mm -hmm. Was she close with your younger brother at all? Well, yeah, because he's the good one. Right. I mean, he's he's the favorite. So everybody's close. His name's Bo. So yeah. I have a son named Bo. Yes. That runs that name runs in our family. And I I took it first because I had the, the first boy. That's the way to do it. Um but yeah, but yeah, I was the I was just the And were you three ever left? Like, did your older sister because my my parents would leave my older brother, I have three older brothers, to babysit, mm -hmm. which was basically like leaving the torturer. The yeah, keys like to the castle. With, yeah. You know, yeah, we're going to yeah, let you yeah. torture yeah. them for three hours while mm -hmm. we're gone. But just make sure they don't die. Mm -hmm. You know, my older brother, he one night got so tired of watching us, he just made us all go sit in the closet. Because <laughs> he was like, I'm done babysitting you guys. Just go sit in the closet so I know where you are. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> well, we all 
the three of us just sat in a fight. We were like, can we turn on the light? He was like, no, go to sleep. So we were go just to like, sleep. We were, we go to sleep in, in a closet. We were just in the closet. See, I wouldn't have minded. But with your, if my sister told me to go sit in a closet, I would have hit her. So that wouldn't have worked. But did you guys? So so we, my older brother was bigger, stronger, a little angrier, and more violent. So that he was, was probably me. Was that you in the middle? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, usually the mischievous one is the younger kid. Um, that was. Um, did you always pull one. pranks? Because I know you look, this is one of the things that you and I bonded yeah. over immediately. Mm -hmm. So have you always kind of messed with people like that? Well, it really kind of started in college. That, that's how when I first met Luke, he would just come do crazy things to my apartment or, He's my, mischievous or, too. or my car. Yeah. And then I would go do it to him. That's amazing. So that's really kind of how it started. I mean, I've always done. We did. I mean, I did a couple of fun, fun. Well, not. I mean, I got in trouble, but in high school, but nothing like until yeah. it started in college. So you, your, your little brother, you guys are still super close, mm -hmm. right? And so when you were growing up, were you like, did you feel like you were kind of like his protector? Did you have that role? I've always felt like that with him. Yeah. And now it's like, if anybody says or talks, oh yeah. Yeah. I'll get violent again. Yeah. So yeah. that 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 instinct has only grown more over time as you guys have gotten older type stuff. Because yeah. he he he's the youngest of three. Three. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that his older siblings. My, you're, I'm sorry. I take that back. Yeah, Caitlin. My, Caitlin, my, my Yo, older Caitlin sister used to beat up dudes yeah, who were messing with him. She Absolutely, used to she used yeah. to protect me. We I remember there was a playground we were at once. I was probably four or five, and there was a bigger kid, probably seven or eight pushing me around mm -hmm. and he could see it. It was one of those like play places where there was like a clear tube. Mm -hmm. It's like a hamster. It's like a hamster yeah. encampment for yeah. children. And Germ could, city. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, yeah. It is a yeah. Petri dish. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> and you just want to douse them when they get out with some sort of. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so he could, and he could see that. And my sister came up and saw the kid picking on me. And, uh, and she said, Hey, you better stop picking on my little brother. And he said, and he pushed her and said, what are you going to do about it? And she just went, Gonna kick his ass. And she yeah. just Jeez. clocked him I'm and he that. went running away crying. And then she came in and hugged him and like she punched him and then consoled him and said, Shh, it's okay. Just don't screw with my little brother again. She and did. And sent him crying well, that was to his nice mom. That she hugged him. It was the craziest thing. What like a complete mind fuck for him. He got punched yeah. in the yeah. face yeah. and then yeah. he got, and then he got his Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Yeah, she's like, like yeah. yeah. That's, no, I would have fake tugged and just need him. <laughs> had that happened in high school? <laughs> like, had that happened to me in high school? If I was a bully and I got punched and then hugged by someone's older sister, I'd be like, I don't know whether to be confused uh, or I'm gonna marry this girl. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what it is. Yes. I oddly have a boner right now. That is such a weird. Thing. <laughs> have a bloody nose and a boner. <laughs> What he knows in a boner. And that's how I met like your a mom. Great name for a band. That's not Bloody a terrible name for an boner. album. Yeah. Not gonna lie to you. That's there my next go. album. All right. Bloody nose. Bloody nose with boner. boner. <laughs> <laughs> my God. That's amazing. <laughs> I, I, I have to. So when you played, by the way, you played sports all through high school? Mm -hmm. What did you run in track? I'm just so curious. Okay, so a variety. I did some some hurdles. With those tiny little, uh, I'm a hurdle. Those short little legs. I hated it. Yeah. How did you hurdle would something some... with those short little legs? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I failed it. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yo, those hurdles are tall. Like. It's like you're going on like straight adrenaline. Was it the, the hundred or, or uh, so did you do for the... the for the guys? We had the one ten and the three hundred. I hated the one ten because those hurdles, legit, dude, were like yes. mid chest on me for the guys. But the three hundreds were so much shorter, yeah. And I have very long legs, like mm -hmm. a gazelle. So the the strides for me, I could match that stride, that seventeen steps between mm -hmm. the hurdles, really well. I couldn't get that three step down over the. Well, that's why I fell a couple of times. But, <laughs> but you and I would get so nervous that I would almost puke. But it was like while I was doing it, you're just it's straight adrenaline. Yeah, it's just straight adrenaline. But. I oh I just I hated them because I would get so nervous. Yeah. But I did that high jump mile relay, um, mile relay. Uh huh. Yeah. Eight hundred. Sometimes I did the mile, but it just different stuff. Eight people who run the eight hundred are a different breed of of stamina. The eight you eight hundred runners could put yeah. anybody. Well, in the I've dust. never won state. Trust <laughs> me, I never. I was. <laughs> I never. I was never the best. I got through it. Did you were uh, growing up, especially in a small town? 
you got to school by yourself. You came home by yourself. Did you, or did you have like that kind of autonomy or did your folks pick you up at school, drop you off at school? Like how did that work for you? Um, well, until I was 16, somebody either, typically my mom would drop us off in the morning and then she goes straight to work. And then either she or a parent would pick us up after sport practice. Mm -hmm. So there was always somebody who picked us up. And then when I was 16, I could, you know, drive to and from school. Was it the kind of, sorry to cut you yeah, off. Go ahead. Was it the kind of small town that like, Everybody knew everybody. Yes. That was so like, yes. like were people marrying each other, high school sweethearts. Like it's just mm -hmm. like all you guys were all one big family. Kind yeah. Of thing. Everybody knew everybody. Got it. Mm -hmm. And you were allowed back then just to be like, hey, I'm going I'm, I'm going to my friend's house and you could just walk out. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you see? I think that was so good for us. That mm -hmm. kind of it for us, it gave a certain confidence. And uh, like the one thing I find about his generation is that I'm uh -oh. listen, dude. No, no, there, I, I know what you're going to say, and I agree are, with it. There are a lot of things that I'm like, oh, this is better. You guys are doing this better than we mm -hmm. did. But but the confidence that we had to be on our own in the world and figure shit out. So I think growing up, I think the one thing that we took away from this generation, a lot of parenting, is because we do everything for them. Yeah, very common. I'm, I'm guilty of that. So we've I'm taken guilty. away their ability to figure shit out mm -hmm. on their own. Yeah. Do you, like... I, that, I, I'm guilty of that but too. But no, what was your hometown? I grew up in a small town too. Okay. So I think that's easier in a small town. Yes. I, but like here, you know, and all you see on the news all day yep. these days, missing, missing, missing. So I, I worry too much, too. but like in a small town, well, back at, back in our day, stuff like that, we, we never heard about. Right. And I couldn't go too far because, because we all live so close. You know, I didn't drive on interstates until I went to college. Yeah. And so, but now it's like, and my son just turned 16 and he's getting his license tomorrow morning. And I'm like, yeah. I, I, it's I just remember. been an emotional week. I mean, I've already been through it with Till, but, and now we have the, all the trackers and I still track Till. I track some of his friends that I've tracked since they were 16. Yeah. I mean, not spying, but. No, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, You know, it's just, if I want to make it's sure they're okay. It's a peace of mind. Yeah. It's a peace of mind thing. Do you think, though, like, we over, because, here, here's what I think. I don't know if there are more bad people, but I think we know about There's them. There's more information. Yes. Yeah. Do it's, you yeah. think, because I really tried to balance, you know, when he was 12, I remember we lived in uh, Studio City, California, right? Mm -hmm. Which is a pretty safe. Mm -hmm. And um, he said, can we go to the park? He was had a friend over. And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, you should call. I won't say the kid's name. You should call Bobby's mom mm -hmm. just to make sure it's okay that you guys hop on a bike and go to the park. And she was like, not if you, she said to me, not a, if you're not going, they can't go. And it, it was such a departure from mm -hmm. when I was eight. I'm sure the yeah, same as you, yeah. but if it was 10 in the morning in the summer, my dad would be like, well, what are you doing in the house? Yeah, get get outside. Get outside. Go go run to the house. With yeah, a go go with a go kart. Yeah, I mean, go do something. What? How do you think we we can start to balance out? Because the conf I think doing things early on by yourself builds your confidence. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think sometimes we've taken that away. We're like, there's got. How do you feel like we can kind of strike a little balance? That's 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 so hard. I guess. I mean, I've got. You know, we, we live on a farm, so yes. my, my boys, I've always let them, once they knew how to ride a golf cart around, but only in certain areas. Right. A lot of people don't have that. And so I just, I don't know. I I just, I don't know. Because I'm the mom who stays scared of yeah. them being on a bike, somebody hitting them. I mean, I just, and I need to calm down some, but I don't know how to answer that. It's, I, 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 for me, I like, I'm. I've racked my brain like, what's the balance? Because truly, it's the safety measures now yeah. way better. Yeah, I didn't see a helmet. I was telling yeah. him, he was like, did you wear a helmet growing up? I'm like, no, not only did I not wear a helmet. But they had helmets. If somebody was on a bicycle with, with a helmet, helmet. They would have gotten picked on. Oh, I was like, hey, where are you going with the helmet, you homo? <laughs> you yeah, know he would like, had a, <laughs> yeah, he would have had a bloody nose. Yeah. <laughs> and we were like... What are you doing? Uh, Come touch my dick with that I helmet. Know. Like you <laughs> yeah, like, damn door. Yeah. It wasn't the coolest kids wearing yeah. the helmet. And so but you, you guys didn't have seatbelts for most of your childhood. No. Definitely I no seatbelts. Never had a seatbelt. Crazy. Belt. You guys had never. cars that didn't have seatbelts, but had that, that had 
seats that turned around so moms could give their kids ass whooping in the back seat. It's crazy. Can, oh no, the front seat that turned. Yeah. We didn't have one of those. <laughs> you didn't have, didn't the, you didn't have those rotatable station wagon I was going to say, seat? I don't. I, we didn't have the we front. had we had that back area that, that faced the back way that I could lay down in. Mm-hmm. Dangerous is. Yeah, with the nobody exhaust cared. coming in the yeah, back window. Nobody cared. You would sit in the back <laughs> yeah. of a station wagon, uh-huh. facing. So you were looking back at the car with the window down, and the exhaust just because the exhaust. <laughs> Did you honestly, ever like just shoot him a bird? Hundred percent. I got in trouble. I got in trouble for shooting a crossing guard at, at school. A bird. <laughs> we turned into school once, and my mom. I did it every day. I mean, I was bad. My mom goes, "What?" In the, in the cross, the crossing guard. <laughs> I would moon people. The crossing guard every day. We turned into school one day, and my mom goes, "Why does this guy give me a dirty look every day?" And I went, "Mom, because I do this to him every morning." Uh, how old were you? Probably eight, seven, six. You're I don't that know. kid in all the John Hughes movies who's doing this to the grownups in the back seat. <laughs> That is a, did you kind of sneak it? Did you yeah. ever pretend to be nice and be like, No, I'll just go. Yeah. <laughs> did you ever get creative with it and go like like a little uh, like, No, like I hot, like that smart then. Like a I, hot air balloon. That <laughs> is amazing. My mom was so mad at me. Oh Your mom goodness. though, has she always been this character she is now? Yes. And now she's just flat. It's it's sad, but she she makes me laugh. My, my mom did go through a rough stroke. And so yeah. She's like Sophia from the Golden Girls. There's no filter and she will insult anybody, but Amazing. it's so damn funny. I love that. But it's so sad to see, you know, her her brain struggling and her speech struggling, but she's there, but when she gets sassy and everybody calls her lockdown cuz she lockdown. hates to lockdown cuz she hates doing physical therapy and the therapist will come to her home. Yeah. She hates it so much that she'll lock him out. And so she's gotten to where if anybody walks out of the house, she's locking the door. So she locks everybody out. So her, her caretaker started calling her lockdown. And that's what we call her. It's like, I'm going to say lockdown. If you lockdown? walk out of the house, she's locking she, the door. Was she funny and mischievous like that growing up? I think some, yes. I mean, there's, I have a frame picture of her when she was probably three with a cigarette in her mouth. She's not smoking yeah. it. She's just smiling, like holding a cigarette. And so your mom, she, you, where did you get your mischievous from? I think that's more from my dad's side. I do. Cause he's the, he's kind of the little more out there fun, but I think that's a little more from, and, and my dad's dad was hysterical. Like, I mean, he was just a ball. So I think that's I think that's more from my dad's side. Did your dad do anything to you growing up? Like I know you said he worked mm-hmm. most nights and then slept. Did he? Because he likes to fuck with me, like a lot. Mm-hmm. Like when I was a kid, I went to I used to get dressed and I would get ready for school and I would put my hands in my hoodie pocket mm-hmm. and there would be Vaseline in all my pockets. <laughs> or one day I went to go See, put. Or <laughs> one day. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's why we like I'm each other. Sure. There was one time I went to go put on underwear in my boxers and there were no boxers, just thongs with days of the week on them. That's and I was great. like, hey man, what is this? And he goes, don't worry about it. Put your Mondays on, sunshine. It's time to go to school. <laughs> Monday thongs, Tuesday thongs. It's like, yeah. well, uh, <laughs> But he, he used to jump out. He, he used to try and do jump scare stuff for, for me, too. But I'm not really a jumper like he is. This guy is a big, really like, easy. jump scare guy. So that's kind of how I'm getting my I'm getting mine back. So yeah. he'll just turn corners and stuff. Because ah! yeah. he also, when he gets scared, he does two things. One, he jazz, jazz hands. That's so it's true. like he's waving jazz and greeting hands. you. And and he, I like jazz hands when I get scared. And, I it's, see a com- the jazz- and it's, oh, accompanied, is- it's accompanied by this noise. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a little louder than that. Yeah, it's yeah. A more of a. <laughs> it's more of a that. <laughs> which is not great. It's my, pretty amazing. Nobody in my family will go see horror movies with me anymore. Oh, I know he gets I called out in public. Movies. People are like, no, no, dude, no, no. Uh-uh. yeah, no, oh, only because he, all night. only because he makes wild noises in public. I do make wild. You sound noise. like a wild animal, legitimately. I can't <laughs> every help time myself. you make that noise. I can't help <laughs> myself at all. Your your kids are how old now? Um, Till's twenty two. Bo's just turned sixteen, and Tate's thirteen. It's so crazy, right? Mm-hmm. Can can I ask when when there are milestones with your youngest? This is what mm-hmm. happened with him. You know, when when your oldest graduates high school or you're like, oh, there's it does but when the youngest, when your last kid leaves 
So now you, everyone's mm. in their teens. Mm -hmm. And those milestones, do they hit you harder than the other ones? Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, the I, last I time think... somebody will be in Little League, the last time somebody's in sixth grade, the last time. Have you read that poem? There's a poem and I can't read it. I mean, it's beautiful, but I think it's called The Last Time. And it's basically about you don't know when yeah. the last time is that you'll carry your kid upstairs or that you'll carry your kids. You just don't know. Yeah. And I can't even talk about it because I will just start squalling because it is it's great. But yeah, no, I, like with Bo, I've, I've been crying all week because. Yeah. I mean, he's getting his, his license tomorrow, even though I'm going to be strict on it. You know, Tate's a teenager, but but he's still, he, he's he's my shadow. Yeah. He's a mama's boy. He's a Pisces, isn't he? Like it was March March 5th, something like that. Yeah, he right? turned 16 March 18th. So oh, oh March, it, it, March 17th. Really? Yeah. Yep. yep. So Whoa. there you go. I, I, I will oh, tell man. you, those, those things that you don't expect to hit you as a parent is like the... The last time I, I said this to a friend of mine, they were like, I'm having, I'm struggling. He, he, he had a tiny toddler mm -hmm. and he was like, I'm struggling with this and this. And it's not as fun as you all said. I'm not enjoying myself. And I was like, you're looking at it the wrong yeah. way. Yeah. You're looking at all these things as work or a struggle or changing a diaper as bad. But remember, there will be, be a day when. Big. And they, they don't want you around as much. They don't want to hug as, you. Yeah. They don't want you to sit next to them and watch a movie together. Mm -hmm. Like there's these things in, I, I don't miss changing diapers, but I miss the stage. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's just that it's the sweetness. Like, you know, yeah. like, like my kids, I mean, Tate still does, but like, you know, Bo or Till used to crave having, you know, let's go have a date night. Let's, let's go, you know, have a movie and just chill you know, Till's 22. He has his own life. I mean, he's still, they still have a back scratch or if anybody needs money, then, mm -hmm. then they're all about a hug. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they just, you know. Somehow they show up. They yeah. show up if, if they need money, but. Do your kids all get along pretty well? Yes. They do. Yeah. They're, you know, Bo and Till went through a phase because when Till was 13, he moved in. Bo was what, eight or something? Mm -hmm. And they would fight, 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 fight. Till and Tate have always been super close because Tate was a baby. Yeah. Yeah. But now Till and Bo are like, they hang out all the time. And it's just, I mean, they are super close. That's, what that's an, amazing. What an interesting, he had uh, asked me a question to, to know if it was okay to ask you. But ask her about, about um, when Till... You join the family. Yeah. Um, so obviously uh, uh, that that tragedy did occur. And I assume for like a 12-year-old that it's can't be, or a 13-year-old, it can't be the easiest adjustment. Like you said, they fought a lot coming in. But what was the conversation that you had with Till when, when that all went down and well, you brought him into your family? I'm also curious, what conversation do you have with your kids? Well, for for a while, there was never really, I think... I was on just survival mode yeah, for right. really almost probably a year, right. just adjusting because, you know, Till went from being the baby with his sisters and I'm, you know, we're super close with his sisters. They're mm -hmm. like daughters to me, right. but they stayed in Georgia because they were a little bit older. So Till went from being the baby to being the oldest. Oh, whoa. Bo went from being the oldest to being the middle and Tate's always been the baby. Yeah. So it was an adjustment from Till being baby to oldest and then Bo middle when everything happened you know till just walked up to us and goes hey i want to move to nashville with y'all and we immediately went okay yeah like we we just never thought twice about it yeah we've always been so close with those kids and i mean that's just well i mean what a crazy adjustment especially yeah. for both sets of kids. Your kids were very young at the mm -hmm. time. Yeah. And we get and, a teenager. Yeah. yeah so it's, it's a lot of learning. And if, yeah. if I could go back, you know, I would do so many things differently. I just didn't know. And what I was do you learning. Think you would do differently. Yeah. Well, I learned that, you know, if Till is up, if, if Till did something bad, you know, the worst thing to do, Till doesn't handle it well if you raise your voice. He he likes more sitting down talking like you did this and this is your punishment, not raising your voice. But and I was just trying to figure out. And then I think I would get so stressed. I, I would just, you know, like because lock up. You, yeah, you, yeah. you, that's so interesting because he's coming from a home where he's 
not better or worse, but parented differently. Mm-hmm. With, and with, he was, and he was the baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah. I mean, he was the baby, and I mean, so I mean, but he's always been doted on. I mean, Tills still comes up and gets his back scratched, yeah. his head rubbed, yeah. just about <laughs> Me every too. day. Me too. Yeah, he's just, like, don't cut your nails. I'm like, yeah. what? I just turned 27, <laughs> and every yeah. time I see my mom, I'm like, mom, will you scratch my back? Oh like, yeah, always, and, that's, and always, which, always. which now I, I mean, I'm like, come on, because you know it doesn't happen all the time mm-hmm. anymore. But, but um, can I tell you? Mm-hmm. I, I wonder if this. I mean, maybe it didn't happen with you. You know, so my two oldest kids aren't mine biologically, right? Mm-hmm. There was always, for me, a little bit in, not that he, a, any of the kids put on me, it was mine. Guilt associated where I was like, I, I don't want them to think that I'm favoring. So I was almost harder on him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not, did, not did almost. You, oh, yeah. yeah. Did you find yourself <laughs> but, ever but doing that? kids are brilliant with, with yeah. doing that. I mean, kids know how to, you know, mind, you know what. You, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think. For a long time, I was I, I was harder on on Bo and Tate than Till because I was trying to figure out you know because biologically I'm Bo and Tate's mom. Yes, right. I used to be, you know, the cool aunt for Chris Jordan and Till, and now we're kind of and now we're in this parental role, and so that was a struggle going from being the fun aunt and uncle to having to get on them about what they're doing, how they're acting, spending money school grades so that, 13, that that's been that that, yeah. that was tough 13 yeah. year old testosterone is just a, mm-hmm. so that's not only is his life turned upside down but inside of his body he's yeah. just trying to, fi- yeah. he's trying to figure weirdest, it out t- weirdest by the way nothing nobody smells worse than a 13 year old boy I was like, you got a 13 <laughs> and a six. You're they're, a, they're, he they're has, she has a 13. Yo, my daughter's feet, feet worse than any feet. <laughs> my daughter's feet, yo, Caitlin's feet, when she would take off her shoes in her room with the door shut, I'd be like, wash your feet. Oh, God. <laughs> you can smell it with the door shut. That's if she tough. ever came out, like we ever went to watch a movie on the couch, Mm-mm. like uh, we, she jazz would have hands. to sit. You know, no, I'm jazz handed right now. <laughs> she would have to sit. She would have to sit on the floor with socks on with a blanket just wrapped so oh, was she wearing feet. like uggs no what... no she used to wear shoes without socks that's, that's what the problem. happened oh, yeah it which is also by the way you can't wash it off the first time it takes like I, i've so done gross. the uggs with like no socks like once yeah that smell never goes away it, and luke was like and i like to have my feet rubbed and i've Threw them off and put them on. He went, hell no. Yeah. He goes, go wash those. Because, I, yeah. I came back. He, he goes, nope, nope. It's, it's crazy. Goes, I've never worn Because once you socks. sweat in those Uggs, even if you wear yeah. socks in them after, you will your feet will always smell like that once you take the I Uggs think, off. I think it he burned those rancid. Uggs, actually. I don't blame him. I, don't, I, I really do don't. I, I, yeah. I, I don't burn things, but sometimes, especially with the kids, like if they're if my brothers would give a toy that I didn't like, like it made too much noise, I, it would get lost. Mm-hmm. I would he'd be yeah, like, "Where's yeah, my thing know. that has a whistle?" I'm like, "I don't." Know. I just found I out. I just she found out know. last year I was supposed to get gifted a drum set when I was ten, but it mysteriously never made it to the house. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> Are you <laughs> kidding? I remember when he was young, he was he was like, "Hey, I want to learn. I want to start playing hockey." And I was thinking to myself, "I don't like you enough to get up at four in the morning for ice time." Oh so we're going to have to figure out an afternoon You're sport for you. Now. I will say, the drum kit never worked out, but I did come home one day with a stand-up bass from, from middle Very school. Nice. We made him we made him get an, do an instrument, right? Mm-hmm. So he goes, oh, I started a stand-up bass. And I go, how come you never bring it home? And he goes, oh, it won't fit on the bus. That's why he picked the instrument. It was too big so for me to bring home. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. I, I couldn't. It, yes. wouldn't, it wouldn't fit Gee, your car. It wouldn't fit in the God. bus. If I ever walked home, I know you weren't cruel enough to make me. There was a case for it. I know you weren't going to make a sixth grade me lug that thing two miles back to the house. There were a lot of reasons. And I was like. And well, that's I a blessing play, for you. I can Big kind time. of play the intro to Seven Nation house. Army on it. Like, there were no. a lot of fun things to it. A little. trombone? Yeah, a trombone and something. No. Ta- so Ta- you hear, wow. Oh, and I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> I played trumpet <laughs> in fourth grade. Trumpet. We've had the trumpet, too. I played the trumpet in fourth grade. I'm like, grade. oh, my God. I'm like, get this damn thing. I could not wait to turn it back in after the semester. It'd be like, wow. And <laughs> this poor thing, you know, a yeah. kid's not going to be good after – Terrible. Six months. I'm like, I'm like oh. Yeah. yeah. Can, you, can you pick up an instrument like the recorder, maybe? Boop. 
boop, boop. Oh, that's not loud enough for a, no. for, 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 for a little boy. Yo. No. We're, but also, I don't think, looking back on it for all the kids who played recorders back in the day, me being one of them, I'm so glad they didn't catch on. Those things are, uh, I for uh, me, more annoying. Like, I just hate the boop, sound. Boop. Because also, if you really play it them. terribly, yeah. you can play a recorder terribly. But even if you play it well, it still sounds terrible. It sounds like a recorder. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's like no way a, to zhuzh it up. No, no, no. It's, that's it's, it. Yeah, it's like, it's like a grandma fart. I was like, <laughs> my, let me tell you, my mom's farts, and I know she's not watching. <laughs> Is it a trombone fart? <laughs> tell, us, tell the story of my grandpa. About oh, my grand, my dad's a little <laughs> bit of a. We were. I was in the station wagon <laughs> facing backwards, you know, in that back seat, uh-huh. and my mom has terrible gas oh goodness and my dad pulled over on the side of the road and he was like hey you got to get out and walk that off <laughs> so he he, <laughs> he made her walk he up and down the freeway the mass pike dude made her walk oh, the up the freeway and, <laughs> that's, <laughs> a, that's she, a bad shit she was Literally. like what do you want me to do he was like i don't know just walk it off walk until it it's off. out but we can't <laughs> oh that's cold yeah, yeah, it, was, that's, it, it was that <laughs> bad tom, is not, tom wolf is kind of a menace i'm not gonna lie but i love him that's are so there weird. things that you hope your kids get from you, and are there things that you hope that your kids don't? Do you know? There are some yeah. things that I, I really hope he gets, or all of my kids get. And there's some things I'm like, man, I hope you don't pick that up. I hope my kids get. I always think about other people, and I do. I I, I want to make sure everybody's happy. But the one thing I hope they never ever get is anxiety, mm. or just the. Do you have that? Yes. And I never had it until we, you know, lost people in our yeah, family yeah. and then it just kicked in. And then, but so I just, I hope they never struggle with, and most days are great, Yeah. but if, if, if y'all have ever had, I don't know if you've ever had a panic attack. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's like, I'm it's debilitating. It's the worst. Like I would rather give birth with no pain meds than to ever, ever have one again. So have your I mean, kids seen you have a panic no, attack? No, 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 no. That's they, They've never seen me have one. No, yeah. well, I, I, you know, for me, the thing that I hope my kids get is also the thing that I hope they don't. I agree with you. Like I, I think it's important to be kind mm-hmm. and to be gracious and to think of other people. I also hope they don't. I think I spent a large part of my life being, there's a difference between being nice and kind. Mm-hmm. Being too nice at the expense of myself. And being taken advantage of. Yeah. Uh, so that's, yes. You know, there's that line. Mm-hmm. I really want, I think it's important, especially now, that you're kind to everybody, mm-hmm. but you also have to know where to draw that line for yourself. That's the one yeah. thing that I. Yeah, I don't, I haven't do feel found that? how to do that. I mean, yeah, a, a lot of times I don't know how to draw that line. And because I'm, I'm more of a, okay, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's yeah. fine. And, and sometimes I'm like, I know it's not. But yeah. Do you, have you seen any of your kids? Tate, de- definitely the baby. Mm-hmm. He likes yeah. to, I, see, I'm the youngest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Me too. And I find that that is a common trait because you see people fighting. Yeah. You're not picked on as much, but you see the turmoil and you just want people to get along mm-hmm. and be yeah. happy. Mm-hmm. And the youngest is a lot of times the funniest too. Oh, Tate's, Tate's, he's 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 quiet, but when he starts going, if he's comfortable around you, he's hysterical. Yeah, like he'll just quick lines to to to, to uh, Till and Bo. Like if if they piss him off, like the stuff he'll just spout out. I'm like, oh my god, that's hysterical. <laughs> I mean, he can just say the funniest crap. He, he, uh, he's but you you and Luke are both super funny. Luke's a funny dude. Yeah, he he's very quick. He's very quick. Mm-hmm. Wait. Hold on, I'm trying to think. The 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 prank about you having to go to the hospital. That was uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. That's what I was just I was thought that uh, Philip dude, dude, Sweet just... was wait, because I was acting like they were I, I didn't themselves. care. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, I was like, oh my God, what's wrong with him? I'm like, Philip's face, because he's so sweet. His face was like, and after after it was over, I was like, Philip, I'm sorry. His face was beet red. He goes, Caroline, and he's so chill. He goes, he goes, Caroline, I was, I was, I was seriously questioning the kind of person yeah. you are. <laughs> he told me he was like, I was questioning our friendship. <laughs> Can I tell you my favorite part about that. that? At the time, I was uh, sick and I didn't know I was. I was actually sick and oh, didn't okay. know I was sick, and I was super thin mm-hmm. at the time. 
and so I was probably 20 pounds lighter than I am right now. Luke picked me up in his arms to when, carry when me he, out. When, when they, he when they walked you out, y'all out that's when I cracked and I had to turn. <laughs> and, and Philip saw me laughing and I, I turned back my head and his face, he's like, <laughs> He was like, he was like, I thought you were a monster. He, w- he went and carried you out of the Luke, bathroom. I mean, he said to me, he goes, he goes, I'm gonna pick you up now. I'm gonna like, okay. pick you up. I was like, <laughs> okay. I, I didn't. <laughs> Take me. For a second, I was like, pick me up, big fella. Take Let's me up, daddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. It was so funny. That prank was really very good because they were both so because they're such good. Such people. good people. It's just so much fun. Yeah. Oh, Philip and uh, yeah, Philip's still not over it. No, he's still not over it because he we was should truly. Plan, we should plan around too. I would love to. They're coming to the show tonight. Great. We could definitely um, prank them up a little bit. Let's do it. Do something to him. Is there, <laughs> I bother him all the time about being healthy. Mm-hmm. About before you ask that, can I yeah. ask one more question on yeah. the follow up? Of course. So something you wish your kids got from you? Is there something you got from your parents that you're glad you got? but also something you got that you're not happy about? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I got from both of them, they're super stubborn. So I can be stubborn. And something that I, I don't think there's anything that I, I don't wish that I, no, I mean, I, they were, they're, they're great. But, but yeah, I think I love that, that I got their stubbornness. Cause, yeah. Cause I am, I can be super stubborn, but I don't think there's anything that I'd, that I have that I wish I didn't. You know what I think you learn as you get older, especially if you have kids, whatever complaints you might've had about your parents, mm-hmm. you're like, oh. I get it now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got yeah. it. They're, honestly, I've stopped, and I don't know if you've ever thought of this, I've stopped looking at, except in extreme cases, mm-hmm. parenting is good and bad. Most people are really just doing the best they can. With, with their, their life, and, yeah. and yeah. That, that's what I know now as an adult, my parents weren't doing anything bad. They were just doing the best that they could, you know, to s- support three kids. Yeah. Right. So, so your, your view changed uh, about how absolutely. your parents did things as yeah. you got older. Yeah. And it's like you said, as kids, you hopefully your parents aren't sharing their terrible childhood. So you don't know what their experience was either until you get older and you look back and you're like, oh, they went through that shit. Yeah. Yeah. This is why this was like this. Mm-hmm. And you know, I, I've said this to Jacob before. When I was growing up, my dad never said, I love you. He was not a hugger. Mm-hmm. And so as a kid, that's what you associate with love. But you know what my dad did? He showed up to every game I ever played in anything. When I mean every game, every game, any that's play. Awesome. And as you get older and you have kids, yo, showing up is Matters. the it's tough. Yeah. I mean, I try to show up to everything because they, they, they look they for look, it. Right? Yeah. I mean, they look and you know, Bo's 16, but he still, yeah. he still looks. Abs- absolutely. I mean, like growing, like I was sports all throughout high school mm-hmm. as well. Freshman to senior year, I played what, like four or five different sports, something like that. Two different schools. He had just started going on tour and this was kind of like when Chelsea lately had really kind of mm-hmm. taken off and he was on tour every weekend and he was in a different city and it was different because growing up, I had never played on a team that he didn't coach. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, my mom was always there. But when he wasn't there, I was always looking into the stands for someone. Yeah. And the one person I could always count on that was at every game, graduation, prom, any school event, anything personal. My mom was at every stand. And yeah. I always saw her for football. I had her wear my away jersey at home mm-hmm. games. I had her wear yeah. my home jersey at away games like and she that was says always... a lot about her because and, and it's a lot of pressure for her too because yeah. you know it's the same thing with my kids looks yeah. gone all the time he if, if he's home he's at a game but so i i especially i'm there because i mean i want to be there but mm. they but they know i'm going to be there mm. there's so much guilt wrapped up on my end from interesting from my job yeah with my job but, do you know yeah but i mean as yeah. long as there's somebody there, I agree. and kids do know, even if their mom or dad isn't there, they know if they're, you know, loved and they can they can understand Ab- somebody has a job to do. Absolutely. For me, it was a lot of just, I, I was so grateful to even just have one of my parents mm-hmm. at everything that I ever did. 
but also knowing that I still had the support of both parents and knowing you were just, you were bringing home the bacon. You were yeah. chasing your dream. You were trying to establish yourself and do what you wanted to do. And that never affected me negatively. Ever. Can I ask you a question? Like, so you had a, you had a parent there every time. Yeah. Did you know kids that didn't? And could you, did like, was that something that people, that they talked about? Or I'm always so curious, mm -hmm. like, was that something that, that, that that kid you could see was like, oh, that kid, it affected them on the field or at the game or anything like that? No, I don't know. I don't really know. Like those, that, those football games, you're okay. Those football games were, were after they ended, it was just kind of like. Yeah, pandemonium. Yeah, it was, everybody was getting off because then varsity was coming on to play. All these people were coming in. You guys always walked off the field with me. I would say there was always a good amount of people that had their parents there. But there were definitely some kids whose parents couldn't make it because of work yeah. or because they lived too far. Dude, there were that high school Notre Dame that I went to in the middle of the valley. There were kids who got up at 4 a.m. and took the school bus from Brent Brentwood from like near UCLA to make it to school by mm. 7 a.m. It's like duck hunting for me. Yeah. Dude, got up. <laughs> got up. It was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy because I'd also, I don't like you enough to drive you three hours to school. <laughs> oh, no. I'm, I'm going to get to a note. I'm going to get to a note on that. Yeah. But there were some kids who would take public Why? transport to make it to. to yeah. No, I'm just oh, cracking. <laughs> there, there were people who, there were kids who would take, as freshmen, as 14-year-old kids, would take public transport buses to get to a school bus pickup stop. To then take an hour and a half school bus to get to school. It was like, it, you know, there's part of me. It was crazy. There's part of me that wishes oddly that my kids had a little more of the struggle that I had growing up. Mm -hmm. I wonder for you, yeah. how, because your kids are also very well grounded. How, how, what have you done like to, they know who they're dad and mom are, yeah. but what, ha and they are probably at some point in their lives treated differently by other kids. Not, not yeah. better or I worse, mean, not, but yeah. differently. Yeah. What, what have you, ha have you said anything to them about it? Or since they've just been in it their whole lives, they've yeah. kind of adopted. They've how been in it their whole lives. So they don't, they don't know any other way. Like with Luke's job, they've been around it forever, but I've always been super, super strict on manners. Mm -hmm. And about being nice. Yeah. So manners and, you know, I'm from the South, so it's not everywhere, but I make sure they say, you know, please, ma'am, yep. sir, open a door for a girl. That drives me nuts when a dude just lets a door slam in a girl's face. I agree. But just being polite. So that's, and I've always told them, you know, you, you don't just get stuff. I mean, on special days, sure, but you don't just get stuff. Yeah. You, know, you got to earn it. But I mean. Well, they, there's always a catch. Yeah. Have they something. worked? Do they well, um, I mean, I know I mean, right? it's different no. from when we were growing mm. up. I think it was just assumed that you, I was, my dad was like, well, you're going to get a job when yeah. you're 14 or 15. You told me you used to lay cement when you were 16. Like what, what I used kind to of paint, job? Paint like, fire hydrants. Your hands in it. <laughs> what kind of job is that you give to a 16 year old? You're trusting a 16 year old to lay cement? I it paid, seems, I paid uh, fire. I painted fire hydrants. They used to let me drive that big. You know, that huge lawnmower that would the part because I worked for the DPW for mm -hmm. the public yeah, the town. Yeah, yeah. So you we used to mow the baseball fields. I used to do the, the paint the lines on the baseball fields. Did you did you try and do uh cool patterns in the outfield? Yeah, it or? didn't work. Yeah. I wasn't yeah. good at that. I only imagine. It. <laughs> no, no, and I tell you what, can I tell you? I honestly had to stop one day. I ran over a chipmunk. I'm like, hey, I can't do this anymore, guys. Oh, oh no. no. I said, it went I was like, no, 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 oh, no, no, no. no. Poor chipmunk. Dude, even 20, 30 years later, we're all like, oh, yeah, that poor chipmunk. I couldn't do it. I, I was just like, did I just meet wood chipper? A oh, chip? no. <laughs> yeah, that would scar me for sure. I have to say, though, man, I loved growing up in a small town. Mm -hmm. I wish everybody had that experience yeah. it's true yeah. of growing up in this i mean i feel like i'm talking i'm doing a john cougar song but <laughs> but you know what i mean but uh well, is he's john mellencamp now or Mo i don't know um but i there was a because we got to be free yeah well you, in my mm -hmm. hometown you know the public transportation was free mm -hmm. and so awesome. and it ran until two in the morning 
Ours was just a bike. Just a bike. Yeah. Well, they are a go kart. That's the public yeah. transportation. Yeah, that's it. Do you know one time he left his bike out on the front lawn, and I remember saying to him, "Hey, dude, somebody's gonna steal that." Mm -hmm. He's like, "No one's gonna steal it," and I was like, "Okay, but someone's gonna steal it." And let me tell you the neighborhood we grew up in. He grew up in. He went out. Somebody had stolen their bike, his bike, but they had left their bike. They, they just traded. liked his more. They just traded. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He was like, this isn't my bike. I'm like, yeah, but. It is now. It's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's your bike oh, now. Absolutely. It. I like this one better. Yeah. The, the yeah. person was just like, picking like, apples. That's a nicer like, bike. at the grocery store. No, this one's better. I'll get this one. <laughs> yeah, but, well. Yeah, it I, was a. I have another one where you're like, you're glad I didn't play hockey. You wouldn't have gotten up to drive me to no, ice time. No. I'm going to show you something that was even way less of a hassle for you. When I decided to play football, um, there was every morning uh, on the off season was morning lifting. So we'd uh, have to go yeah. in 6 a.m., lift from 6 to 7, shower, class started at 8. We lived, no joke, if you walked out to the main street near our house, I could see my school from true, there. True. He would not get up and drive me. I had to get up an extra hour early. Mm -hmm. And walk to school in the morning Listen, at 5 a.m. Why do I got to get up at 6 in the morning? Yeah. I've been working all night. The school is a quarter mile away. Just walk it out. Yo. So you couldn't ride a bike? He could have ridden. He could have hopped on a bike. He could have hopped on a scooter. Yo, there, I remember walking up one day and the head varsity coach and the weightlifting coach were like, Wolf. And I was like, yeah. They go, what are you doing? And I was like, walking to, to, to lifting. They go, where do you live? Do you take the bus? I go, no, I, I live like just down the road over there. And they're like, okay. They go, parents don't feel like getting up this early. I go, no, my dad doesn't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Were they passing you in a car? No, no. I was about to say, they're not going to pick you up. That would be awesome. I would be like, dude, I They were waiting at the entrance to the school. I thought you, you meant like they were passing you in a car walking and off your ride. I wish they were. I'm going to start telling the story like they were driving by me in a car And they just waved. No, they were standing at the entrance because they like to greet kids and parents as they drove in. By the way, you heard that other parents did actually drive their kids. Yeah, but they were suckers. I'm going through that crap. Yeah, but it's he, tough. They, I remember them looking at me. And when I said, no, my dad doesn't give a shit. And Coach Garcia, the weightlifting coach, was like, never met your dad, but I like him. Yeah. And then just was like, did you ask the lifting? It was great. I, I, listen, man, it wasn't that I didn't. No, no, no. I, I don't give a shit. But give like, a shit. and if you live, if we lived three miles away, I probably would have driven you. But no, we were less than a mile away from the school. Yeah, you got to get yourself there. And it the coach cold. didn't offer to, hey, I'll Thank swing by and much. pick no, you up. If it's a mile away. No, Coach Garcia loved it. He's the kind of guy where he you was know like, Coach Garcia, that's messed up. Yeah, Thank no. you very much. <laughs> yeah, it is. Gar I know Gar so Garcia was like, that builds a character, man. I love, I will say that Gar Garcia from that specific school is one of the one dudes I really remember the most. Knowing that. I'm always curious about how other parents do this. People drink in high school, right? Mm -hmm. And so where do you draw the line about, I know this happens. I did this growing up, but I, can't, I don't want you to do it growing up. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Or do yeah. you, when it came to drinking and things like this, if you're going to rub it in my face, I'm going to have to get you in trouble. But I kind of know what's happening. And if you're not rubbing it in my face and you're being however safe or just growing up, I'm probably not going to jump your shit for mm -hmm. it. That was kind of my attitude. Don't make me bust you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. How, where, where are you guys with that? Well, um, obviously now if I call Bo, I'm, I'm kicking his ass. I right. just am because I just am. But I knew when Till was a senior in high school, I knew he and his friends had dabbled in it some. But I. I was so strict about my house will never, ever, ever be a party house. Yep. Don't bring it here. If I catch anybody here doing that, because you're liable when kids are at yes. your home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I knew when where some of the more lenient houses were, but mine will never be a party house. I just, that's where I draw the draw the line. I was th that that kid that maybe drank once or twice in high school. Oh, you were not a party person in high school. No, I mean I had fun, but. But when I went to college is when I went wild, not not like drugs wild, but right. like drinking and having fun and didn't know how to just doing stupid stuff because I just didn't know how to handle alcohol. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you. Like I tried to ride that line between, OK, because you want to parent in reality. Yeah. You can't parent ideally. Yeah. That shit. Yeah. That doesn't work. Right? Work. Yeah. yeah. It, nobody lives in mm -hmm. that idyllic mm -hmm. world. 
So I, it's it's walking that line between, okay, I want my kids to be honest with me and open. I can't have liars and people hiding things behind my back. Mm -hmm. But I also can't be a dude who's going to be like, do whatever you want. I'm yeah, your buddy. No. No, my kids all know. I mean, I, you know, with Till, I was like, look, I know that you have gone to a friend's house and y'all been drinking just, you know, I'm I'm like, always call me. Yeah. Like, because you know, we lost Luke's brother in a drunk driving accident. And so it's like, the, like if we lost you, that would, no, nobody would ever be the same. So he, he always knew that he could call me mm -hmm. and he's sworn that he's, has never been drunk and, and driven. And now thank God there's Ubers, Ubers everywhere, but we didn't have that, you no. know? So it no. was stay at a friend's house or walk or yeah. please don't drive. But but yeah, I'm like, just I'll give you money for an Uber, like in college. Like, I will give you money for Ubers. Yeah, just yeah. don't. And he's been good about it. That's yeah. good. I mean, I look for us. I mean, growing up, I mean, I won't say ours was the party house because I didn't ever throw parties because that wasn't it. But ours was definitely we we were the hangout house because mm -hmm. for us. Well, I was out of town. Well, yeah, but still. So like, your mom you, would. You, you, but still, like, mom, that wouldn't have been just a mom decision. Like, no, that definitely still, was like, not a, just a mom decision. That's what I'm saying. Like, collaborative as, as a couple and as a married couple, you guys were like, look. Because before we, I was allowed, or we were, you know, having smoking or doing whatever in our backyard, I was sneaking out of the house, staying at my friend's house down the street, and then we'd sneak out of his house and go smoke down by the LA River, mm -hmm. which is where the homeless people were and the raccoons and the possums and just like, you know, LA shit. Oh, Lord. And we that makes just, me sweat just thinking about it. homeless people, raccoons, and, and possums. possums. Yeah, and we would just... <laughs> I was thinking and, that. And we would just sit what down there. What a trio, there. that... Is there a cotton candy pit machine? They're too? all sitting. There. It's the homeless people and the raccoons and possums around our just, yeah, around a campfire. campfire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, telling each other get, stories. Getting high. Yeah. <laughs> telling ghost stories. And then and then we'd have to all the smelling like weed sneak back into his parents' house. You know what the funniest part about that was? I never told you this. He made me hold my breath sneaking into his house. And I was like, why? He goes, well, we just smoked weed. It'll smell up the house. And I'm like, you're the stupidest oh God, person is... of all time. Like, Do you gonna... think that's where all the smell is <laughs> coming I, I was like, look, I'm going to just do it because I don't want to have this argument. But you might be the dumbest person of all time. Like, like, what are we going to do about our clothes? Yeah. Well, you know what he used to do? He used to bring another backpack with a change of clothes for himself. Like, it was so crazy, the um, the lengths he went to. I'm like, dude, you should just stop doing drugs. Like, <laughs> it just Man. doesn't even seem fun at this point for you to go through all this. But I like, wish a possum would have snuck in his backpack <laughs> if you when he got home. Can I tell you, when we moved into a house, Beth and I and Jacob, we moved into a house, and the third night we were in the house, from outside of our bedroom window, we heard, You're mm -hmm. like, okay. and then uh, up against the house. And it turns out, and first of all, Beth, we're in bed and Beth was like, what is that? And I was like, how the fuck am I supposed to know? <laughs> the house is haunted. Damn, don't you see me laying here next to you? Like, how am I supposed to, know I supposed to know what's outside the house right now? And she was like, go outside and look. And I was like, I'm a feminist. <laughs> I was, I'm Maybe. a feminist is a wild response. Maybe. I love that. All, all things Maybe. being equal. Maybe you should go outside. But it turns out... <laughs> It was two so honey, possums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was two possums having sex against our house, and the mm, was the male possum. The and noise then, he and, made, and then the thrust. What, the <laughs> was the female's head hitting our house. It the possum was, was not a feminist. Dude, no. I, yeah. <laughs> The that grunt, awesome. the grunt was my man oh, putting dude. in some work. I was like, this thing is putting in some work on these Poor streets. Guys. Possum's head. Three Maybe she was high. Yeah. Maybe she was smoking. With it was pretty crazy. Yeah, that's a, I, not too many people have good possum stories, but that's my favorite one. But we, <laughs> I actually do have a possum story from the LA River. From you one do? of those, yeah, yeah, from one of those escapades. We 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 <laughs> we had gone out, and there was always a specific tree we had sat behind or sat next to because it was like put our feet feet there. We could like put all our stuff up. It just worked out. And one day, I am sitting there, and we're smoking out of a bong, and I look to my left, and I just see a possum start coming down the the LA River, and I stop, and I'm like, I'm gonna do what it does, which is not move, and I'm just gonna You're playing dead. Yeah, I was like, and hopefully. This thing's just going to keep moving. And I just, I stopped moving. And my buddy looks at me and he goes, hey, man, what are you doing? And I'm just not moving. He goes, you're starting to freak me out. Like, what's going on? And I just pointed. And this man 
freaks out, slams the bong into the tree, shatters the entire thing, and is like getting up trying to pick his pieces together. And the possum at the same time, me and the possum still haven't moved. I'm just sitting there. You and the possum are simpatico? Simpatico? Yeah, I think that's the right term. If not, we'll cut it. <laughs> <laughs> you were going to say... <laughs> me, me and the possum... I'll Google it after. Me, simpatico. <laughs> me, me, me and the possum were synchronized. Mm, no, I definitely didn't mean synchronized. Okay. That but, wasn't a possum. That was a homeless person. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Coming to steal your stash. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the, my, the, my favorite homeless dude down there, um, he always used to wear- My favorite homeless person <laughs> down there? Yeah. Well, we didn't talk to him, but I, I, when I we used to watch- Is it the, the dude with the Barbie slippers? Yeah and, the, yeah, and the pink puffer jacket that was for sure made for a four-year-old, so he yeah. walked around just like this all yeah. day. Yeah, that guy. That guy made me laugh. I liked him. What is <laughs> your kids play pranks? And and what is, because I love pulling pranks mm -hmm. on them. What's your best prank you've pulled on one of your kids? Your favorite. Do you have a favorite? I have a favorite, a couple favorite pranks. Probably my all-time favorite was Chelsea Lynn getting Luke. I mean, that was just yeah, with so Luke's good. mom. Yeah. And I, that was just, that was, that, a, that was so good. Yep. And then sneaking out of the cupboard and scaring the crap out of Luke, but do you like sneaking in the scared? cupboard? Yeah. I love that. I love a good That's, scare. Yeah. Do he you hate being scared? Oh, do, I, do, <laughs> yes, yes. do you scare your kids? Do they know what's coming for them? They get really annoyed with me. Um, yeah. I mean, but but they'll get. I mean, they still use an air horn on me, and I just oh, it, I love, ev every one time of my I'm just like, oh, because it's it's the easiest, but it's, it's the funniest one. One of my favorites. Do you know one what else favorites. equals um, an air horn? For a couple reasons, a car horn, because Beep. you think death is right behind it. <laughs> if you're in front of a car and it goes, man, the noise scares you. But and then in your brain, you're like, oh, a car is coming. Yeah. I'm about to die. Have, have you heard the tire screeching one? No. That got people so good. I put, I got, I downloaded like tire screeching no noises and put, put um, like a sound thing under a tire. And I would just talk to a friend and set it off. And they're, they, yeah. I mean, they're jumping. <laughs> that is And I amazing. have one dude in slow-mo. I mean, he thought his life was over. His Luke jumped. Because all, all you hear is like, Scrar! I mean, he thought his life was over. And that's a good one. That's My awesome. favorite God. type of scare is when they get so scared, they almost jackhammer themselves <laughs> yeah. into the ground. They're... Uh, there's no jumping. It's like a, uh, there's a, almost but, like a melting. My, my favorite scared is the one where you scare someone so bad, they just start running. And yeah. like, cause like, cause they're, they're conscious when they run, but then when they end up in a different part, like they, like, they everything in between is a blackout. So they're like, how did I get here? <laughs> like, like you got scared so bad once that you ran all the way up the driveway and on top, you ran into the front yard and jumped on the furniture in the front yard. Like a Caitlin. rat was chasing you. It my was daughter, crazy. My daughter wore, put on, so when she was eight, she told me she couldn't be scared. And I go, hey, I'm too immature. Don't yeah, tell me. Yeah, that. yeah. Don't She's supposed to trust like, you, man. What? It's like a challenge. Yeah, yeah it's, but it's don't, a challenge. I'm too immature to tell me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, don't tell me that. And she was like, you can't scare me. I'm like, I know, okay, I know you're dead, yeah. but like, don't, this is your last. Like, you're going to, you're going to hate me forever. On her birthday, I think she was nine or 10. On Maybe her birthday. Nine, yeah. She was in the backyard and we had been all in the backyard and, and, um, everybody went in and my, I had my brother say, Hey, Oh, tell Caitlin, she left her money out. Oh, you left your money out on the mm -hmm. table out there, ran out and get it. So she went out to get it and there's a $20 bill out there and I was wearing a scream mask. And now I didn't go, ah, yeah. right. I just said, Hey, Kate, that was enough. Yeah. She, you know, like in a cartoon <laughs> where they Jump in the air and their feet go. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah. <laughs> Cloud of smoke with the shape of her body. She she doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah. and she hit the sugar out. She just went boom yeah. and she ran straight into the sliding glass door, bounced <laughs> off, picked up the twenty dollar bill. I was like, "That's my girl," and then <laughs> ran inside that money. and then locked the door, which which I thought was great. So I went back in. I was like, "Hey, happy birthday! Uh, remember when you told me you could be scared?" You know what she said? I'm a kid. Oh, and I was yeah. like, yeah, that's See, what yeah. I mean. Yeah. She yeah. trusts you like yeah. to look after her. And, and I did look after her. her by showing her not to challenge the wrong person. Yes. That when, is when the wrong like, life honey, lesson. Honey, be smarter. That's right. Make smarter choices. When she was 16, I was walking up to our house. This is what he's referring to. And the house had hedges, the walkway up to the front door mm -hmm. on either side. 
So I always thought to myself, what a great place to jump out and just <laughs> destroy their soul. So I'm walking up and it's like one in the morning and I just was doing a set and I was in my own little head mm -hmm. and she's wearing this long flowy white dress where I couldn't see her feet and couldn't see just tips of her hands. And she kind of glides out from behind the hedges with the scream mask and the glowy flowy. Yo, I, ding, 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 ding. I was out in the middle of the front yard on furniture <laughs> and she walked out. She took the screen mask off. She threw it on the ground. And she said, I've been waiting eight years to do that to you. I've been waiting eight years. And yeah. I was like, that's my girl. She I, said, yeah, I, I love that's that. Like, that's awesome. That's my girl. I, I, for me, I think pranks and things like that are such a good thing to do. People just want to laugh. Especially in the yeah. family. Yeah. Look, man, if you keep it fun, yeah, this is what I'm saying. And when I watch you guys and your kids always have a sense of humor, look, if you keep it fun, I, I, and I always told them it, your childhood and life is about making memories. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's storytelling. You want to be able to sit down 10 years from now. You can tell the same story to each other every year when you guys, like you have college friends or whatever friends from high school, mm -hmm. you're telling the same stories, yeah. Yeah. but they're it's what life is. Mm -hmm. And so I think the pranks and all that, those are stories that you guys will tell Yeah, forever. kids secretly love it. I mean, yeah. they do. I, I, they, I would say do. kids secretly love it depending on the relationship that you have with your parents. Absolutely. Yeah. Like depending on what the family dynamic is, like that sort of fun for some people may be detrimental to relationships in other families. Do you well, know what I mean? I remember and I wonder, and so for me, I, I say I love you to my kids probably too much. Mm -hmm. And no. probably a little too, no, you don't. I'm super huggy and all yeah. that. I always have been because I did not, that wasn't my experience yeah. growing up. Mm -hmm. That was the same for you? Yes. And that's why I do what I do now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're, we're like, I'm, I'm not as, like, I'm not as nervous as my mom was. My mom was, mm -hmm. grandma was a super nervous Grandma is still super nervous. Was a super nervous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anytime, anytime well, you, know you what tell I... her you're not feeling well, she's like, you go to the doctor, you oh should go to the God. hospital. Are you feeling well? How's your throat? It's like, Grandma, I just have a little sniffle. It's but all good. Like, I, I do find that, like, you know, oh, it's you either lean into what your parents did or you go the exact, the yeah. exact. Yeah. Like, it's either I, I, they were like this, so I'm going to be like this, or... Because like, I remember yeah. growing up thinking, I'm going to tell my kids I love them. There were some things I remember thinking I'm not going to do that I that I do do. Like mm -hmm. I, you said do do. I, do, -do. I, I, <laughs> like, when my dad would say because I said so, I would be like I'm never saying that to my kids. But now it's you oh, said, everybody you said, says it. Easiest I, one. Everybody I says I it. don't know how many times. I don't know what number that would be for how many times you said I because I've said so. There was another thing you took from your dad that I really like. There was one time he walked into my room. He goes, all right, I'm leaving. I go, where are you going? He goes, oh, I didn't tell you. I go, no. He goes, I guess it's none of your business then. And he just shut the door. <laughs> yeah, that was one of my dad's favorites. He showed up like four hours later. I was like, where'd you go? And he yeah, goes, my dad, like, I business. didn't tell you. No, because no. it's grown up stuff. You don't need to know. I don't need to run stuff by you. And my I was kids like, would be like, mom. <laughs> it's not even You're going to be back me. for dinner? What's for dinner? Do you, but do you like, so I let them talk to me in a way my parent, my not in a disrespectful way, but we speak more colloquial, more conversationally like, mm -hmm. with each other than like, I ever did. I think with my we're parents. more open now. Like yeah. uh, we just didn't have. I just, I guess, back in back in our day, I'm sure p p parents and people were different, but back then, like we just weren't as open with our parents yeah. about talking about stuff. It was a different time, and now it's just a. I feel like our kids are just a lot more open and willing to talk more. I we're, just, we're I, more nosy too. Yeah, but we are. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if we. Can. I don't want to put this on my parents. I don't know if we care more. I just think that like there was a certain way of, especially for men, mm -hmm. there was just a certain way of doing things. And you were, this, you were, and the caretaking and the, the nurturing yeah. part was not well, something was different. Yeah. It was that, that one second yeah, was not yeah. something yeah. that not only they were expected to do. I don't know how they would have been looked at yeah. to be an extra nurturing Mm -hmm. man at that point in time mm -hmm. I, I yeah like, I, it is different yeah it, it, it and, is and for sure like I, and i joke about this in my act 
But like, man, to grow up in a house where somebody cared about your feelings or where you had an opinion, I don't remember having an opinion growing yeah, up. Yeah, and I, I always knew that my parents cared about my, my feelings. I just don't think I would ever tell them. And and now there's we can see our kids' phones, we can we can yeah. see their computers. Yeah. So there is more for us to kind of know. But I just never really talked to, to them if I was upset. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. So I think from a kid's perspective, just growing up in this day and age, with how with how influential like the internet is and how mm -hmm. much we see nowadays and that stigma, like you said, of guys not being nurturing or not wanting to talk enough. I think in this day and age with, with everything that we're seeing and kids seeing what their parents might've gone through, I think it's just more of like, it's becoming more apparent that kids are not being afraid to talk more to anybody about anything because mental health is very, is very important to my yeah. generation. Like yeah, it really, yeah. it really Absolutely. is. Do you know what I mean? You've so, also been told that your opinion matters. Right. Yeah. And we're, yeah. When I was growing up. Ew. We, we didn't get a vote. Like, like, like who wants what for supper? Oh my no, God. no, you who didn't wants get what asked for dinner. Nobody, we, no, we never got asked that. Oh we no, you just got put what was in front of you. Yeah, my you didn't was like, eat. Is this this isn't a diner? Yeah, exactly. You don't order food, and now we just talk about it. Like, who wants to pick dinner tonight? No. Yeah. No. I used to just say what's for dinner because I wanted to know what mom was cooking. I wasn't trying to pick. I just wanted to know what I was going to Oh, there eat. was no pick. And not yeah. only that, I, <laughs> I just, just wanted little... to know what food was going to be in front of me. I just I just wanted to prepare myself. <laughs> I was <laughs> old school. I remember my oldest son, Trevor, one dinner, he was like, I'm not eating broccoli. I'm like, you got to eat that broccoli. And he was like, I'm not eating it. And I was like, okay. And when we woke up the next morning and he had eggs and his sister had eggs, Trevor had broccoli. And I was like, this is going to so be bad. on your plate yeah. mm -hmm. until you eat it. Mm -hmm. So, but that I feel is more, was more common when I was growing up mm -hmm. that you just, but also yeah. look, my, our, my parents and, and, uh, and you, maybe your parents too, they were raised by uh, depression mm -hmm. era people oh, who Lord. instilled a different mentality. Yeah. Right. With food. Yeah. With food, I especially. Mean, my right? grandmother would put in the freezer when she passed away, we, you know, were cleaning out her house and she saved everything. We cleaned out this big in tenfold peanut butter and, and jelly sandwich. Yeah. Nothing got thrown away because, you know, right. th there were times when, you know, that's all her brain never went from, okay, I mean, I, it's okay if I throw this tiny bit away to you no, know, I have to save everything. Cause you know, growing up then so poor that, Every every morsel. Every morsel mattered. But yeah, she yeah. had, I mean, like 12 of them like this I in the freezer. That. And I'm like, what My mom you reused doing? You never know. the aluminum foil. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, I mean, was like, how what? long is this roll of or aluminum foil? Or a coffee filter. Or a coffee yes, filter. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Did you guys reuse paper towels? No, but my dad made us, okay. We didn't Sheets grow up with any money. Yeah. My dad made us count squares. Of toilet, squares. Of toilet, oh, toilet, paper. toilet paper. Oh, yeah. And he would look and be like, that poop probably just needs four squares. He would look at your poop. If we were sitting there, because one of my brothers oh. used a lot of toilet paper. So he would be like, before you flush, <laughs> let me take a look. And he was like, that's a four <laughs> let square me poop. Take a look. <laughs> he'd, he'd four square poop. Oh, God. I, would, oh, I would vomit. Oh. Let me take a look. <laughs> Really, Dad? Yeah, no. He, I'm 22. He, he, <laughs> he, he four squared poop, but he would tell you, man, you're using. And then I'll tell you something. My grandfather, who had, a, they had a little extra money. We used to really look forward to them coming over because he would bring us all a pack of Charmin. So we'd all have four ever. rolls of Charmin instead it. of. Because <laughs> I'll tell you, man, that's the one thing I didn't mind. We ate. Bags, potato chips that just mm -hmm. had, or white bags that said chips on them, mm -hmm. or just a loaf of bread that just said bread. All that didn't bother me, but that sandpaper, toilet paper, which it didn't even absorb, it just kind of wiped things or just kind of moved it around. It hurts. It hurts. A friend of mine does that. And I mean, I'm like, you're wealthy. Why do you? She goes, it's not good for the sewer system. I was like, it's not good for anybody's cooter or ass yeah. either. <laughs> like, this is horrible. Yeah, yeah. But she uses it's, that sandpaper stuff. It's not good for my sewer system. Yes. Do you understand? Yeah, oh. yeah also, if she's, if she's got the money. I'm, I'm going to need some tuck pads or something. You have to, this is horrible. Just yeah, upgrade, upgrade your sewer system, I guess. I something. We were at a venue 
maybe three weeks ago. I remember I walked out of the bathroom. I go, I'm not coming back here. And he said, why? And I was like, yo, they're not spending any money on toilet paper. They hate us. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I, I won't remember to bring my own roll next time I come. To, I'm not making a note you know, in my calendar. I'm going to do that. Next time I'm at our house, I'm taking my own roll of toilet paper. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I'm going to keep this here. Just write Caroline on it. I don't know. Hide it. Don't touch my toilet paper. Hilarious. It's not good you know what I, system. The, 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 it hurting my ass absolutely is. But you know what I'm always worried about when I'm using that toilet paper is like, you know, maybe. The poke through? Yeah, poke through. Like, uh, that's, what I'm, oh. that's what I'm scared about because I would be like, I don't want to be wiping and then be like, surprise. Like, yeah. that's not what I want the toilet for. Yeah, I don't dude, like that. And not like for nothing, shit. you got really long fingers. That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> Hey, it's not. It's not the kind of surprise. Yeah, you're you're gonna for. have a poke through. Yeah. You're like, oh, it's gonna be a prostate. It's that gonna be a doctor's prostate. visit. Yeah. Is what that was. It's gonna be a prostate check twelve years too early for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that is not what I want. Did I ever tell you? Wait, pause. I don't like how we started oh, oh, that. Uh, uh, <laughs> After I talked about a prostate exam, you went. Did I ever tell you there about one got a finger up the butt? We yeah. can talk about it. Sure. <laughs> you know, looking back, I've, I've, I've. <laughs> I've in my lifetime, I look back and go, oh, that person kind of took advantage of me. Oh, I didn't know that was wrong. So I got in a car accident when I was like 26 in LA. And uh, my insurance was like, go to the doctor. Mm. If your back is sore, go to the doctor. Let's just make sure. So I go to the doctor that they set me up with. And we're checking my back. And the dude's like, I hear from behind me, <laughs> and I'm like, what's going on? And he was like, well, we got to check the prostate. I'm like, what? Yeah. Now I'm 20. Yeah. You know, you, when you're younger, you don't question a doctor. And you, yeah. you assume. They have a PhD. Oh what God. am I questioning? By the way, here's another thing That's that I do crazy. like about your generation. We would never question authority like that. Yeah. I, I feel like a younger generation now would be like, why are you sticking yeah. your fingers? <laughs> I question authority <laughs> all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I have yeah. a fever. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Are, I'm not a dog. You're not checking the temperature in my asshole. But, but, but <laughs> no, I used to get a thermometer. That's where they used to take my temperature. At the vet? No, but at the doctor. <laughs> when you're 26? Put, yeah, what is that? I'm not. No, 35. Oh, no. God. Uh, <laughs> no, but when I was, I remember a kid at the doctor, they would take my temperature rectally. Yeah, as a kid, yeah. Yeah, how yeah. about yeah. no? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, dude, they would that. Put, they would have that giant jar of Vaseline and they would just Oh god. They would put it Yeah. You know the did your family my dude, my grandma used to thought she thought Noxzema cured everything. That Noxzema cream, uh -huh. you'd get like a terrible burn or an open wound. She'd be like, just rub some mm. Noxzema cream on it. It's, like, it's called salve. <laughs> yeah. That's what they called it in Georgia. Just get salve. Just, just get some salve. Yeah, and put rub it that on. on. Uh -huh. That cured everything. Um, do you have anything else you want to ask? Um, I, I do have one just overall because obviously you have an amazing family. And you guys are super close and, and you guys seem amazingly put together like it was God's gift. Is there anything that you regret parenting Ooh. and with all of these and with all of the things you guys have been through and with, uh, and with everything mm. that up to this point, is there anything that you would have done? If differently? you want me to give you a second to think about that, okay. I can give you, what's a good question. I don't know if you've ever asked me, I can give you one regret that I don't know if you've ever heard me talk about. I, and that might give you just, mm -hmm, okay, sure. I'm in for that. When your, when you were probably a year and a half or two years, I was newly single with you guys. Mm -hmm. And so it was a lot at 27, trying to figure out how to raise three kids mm -hmm. all under the age of five, making a thousand dollars a month, living in Los Angeles, still mm -hmm. trying to figure out how to go out at night and, and do what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. It lived my, but also st still parent. and. At 27 also, I, mentally, I, I just wasn't ready for all that. Right. And, um, and one of my biggest regrets in my life. So you, Caitlin loved you, loves you. But mm -hmm. she was like, it was just me. So a lot of times she would pretend mom at four. Okay. Right. And, and pick you up. And I was always like, Kate, you can't pick him up. You were, you, she was... Up until she was two, I could hold her in my hand like this. She could stand and like a little doll. And um, so one day, one of those days where it was like, oh, this is how much money I owe. I have $800 in my bank account. 
total. I, you know, at that time, you guys were eating three meals a day, but I was probably eating one. Um, it was a real life was like, you know, sometimes life's like quit, quit. That's all you hear life saying to you, quit, quit, quit. Right. And I was really struggling and I was on a phone call with this dude who had just canceled a $5,000 gig for me. And at the time, $5,000 was five times what I made a month. Right. That was such a huge amount of money for me at the time. Mm -hmm. Where I was like, I wouldn't have to think about anything for three months. Mm -hmm. And he canceled it. And I'm on the phone with this dude, just trying to get it back. And he's like, listen, I can't. And we were going, and your sister had you picked up. And I was like, Kate, I'm on the phone. Hey, Kate, don't don't pick up your brother, please. And um, I'm back on the phone. And then maybe three seconds later, four seconds later, I hear a crash and you crying and she had dropped you. She was carrying you outside to the patio. She had, but she had dropped you on the tracks to the door. Ooh. So right across here, you just had these lines, this red lines. And I've never done it before. And I've never done it since because I don't believe in spanking. That was mm. not my thing, but I whacked her pretty good on the back of the head and it fucked me up for a long time. Mm. And I've regretted it for, Ever because it's so it's so not you not me yeah but it was one of the moments where like I also where I was trying to forgive myself where I look back at things that my parents did where I was like I forgive you guys too I know there are times when you're not perfect but a lot of times when you're not perfect by yourself mm-hmm. there's nobody else that you're harming or affecting right but when you're raising kids there are times when you're going to be human and not perfect mm-hmm. and that was like such a glaring time, but, but without a doubt, the biggest regret, because there's just no excuse for it. There's when a, when a child is four years old, they have no concept of, and when you are the, the thing in the world, especially when you're single, who symbolizes safety and love and security, and you break that, that fucks them up. Yeah. That fucks him up, especially mm-hmm. that 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 safety feeling. Your kids, that's such a huge thing that they feel safe and confident. That's how they're going to grow into powerful people. Absolutely. But that, for me, without a doubt, my biggest regret, maybe in my life, but definitely as a as a parent. I knew I got dropped in the head as a kid. It wasn't me. Sorry, <laughs> I had to like, no, yeah. I had to, I had yeah, to yeah, break. Yeah. I had to, it's okay. I okay. did too. Yeah. yeah. Shocking. Do you, have, do you like, it doesn't have to be something crazy like that, but is there anything you're like, man, I wish I had done this a little differently. No, it's, it's pretty much kind of like your story. Um, there's, there was once when I had a ring on kind of like this, when they're smaller, you know, you, I, I don't lose my temper nearly as much now because yep. they're bigger, but smaller. I went to, Bo was doing something, it drove me crazy. And without thinking, I popped him in the back of the head and the ring I had on, really hurting Ooh, yeah. and he really cried and i think about that all the time and i think about a couple of smart comments that i've made to probably all five kids that it was like in the heat of the moment yeah and i, I will wake up at night s- sometimes and think about what i said i mean nothing like horrible but like a smart comment yeah that w- still wasn't nice and i said something to bo once and the look on his face when I said it, and it was just a smart comment. It, I, it, it, it haunts me. Yeah. Can I tell you mm. my biggest regret with you? And this still fucks me up because it's more recent. And I know we joke about it, but I know, and I know you tell me, he tells me all the time, dude, don't worry about this stuff. Mm-hmm. I had such a great show, but, oh, yeah, yeah. But, you know, for jokes, I would, because you take things that your parents say to heart. You know, I wear a hat, right? Yeah. When I was 12 years old, my dad, I was in the kitchen washing dishes and he was like, whew, you got a big forehead. I put on a hat the next day. I haven't taken it off since. Right? Yeah, but he, it, that was just a, a joke. Yeah. Right. right? It, it can hurt them. And that, yeah. I've yeah. always said the craziest thing about being a parent is you're going to say something to your kid that's going to affect them for the rest of their lives and you have no idea what it is. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. It's so yeah. crazy. 
I regret so much making jokes about you being the dumb one. Oh. I, I always joke yeah. if you have multiple kids, not that uh, one's yeah. dumb, but there's a dumb one. Yeah. I mean, right? yeah. I mean, and it's, it's not trying to hurt. Yeah. But it. So yeah. for me, my biggest regret is that sometimes I feel like that sunk in with you and you're not, you know, I, you're not. I may not be not, book smart, but I'm street smart. And for me, that's what matters most. But like, you're not like that. I think about that a lot. Like mm -hmm. I, I don't want you to carry any of that. No. Because a lot of times yeah. we're trying to be funny. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. It, and, yeah. and I will say, I actually have taken some solace in being the dumb one because I have a lot of people who come up and they're like, hey, I'm the dumb one too. And you make me feel not as dumb. And I'm like, <laughs> glad, to, glad I can help you with that, Buckaroo. Thanks a lot. You might <laughs> um, all right, we got to wrap this up. I think that's uh, it. Um, thank y'all for having me. That thank was, you so, that so was much. That so much fun. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much you're, for coming on. This was amazing. You're such an engaging, honest, open, relatable mm -hmm. person. Like I, every well, time- so are y'all, so it's so easy. Yeah. But every time I've ever talked to you, I remember saying to Beth, like, she's like everybody I ever grew up with. I'm the dumb one, too, in my family. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'll take you it. You did drive a go-kart through a house <laughs> and light uh, yourself yeah. on fire yeah. for a brief amount of time. Is there anything you want to talk about? You want to talk about Brett's barn? Do you want to, anything you want to mention? Oh, no, just, um, we are trying to, my other sidekick is over there. We got, She's amazing. We got, way. yeah, we got a new Brett's barn and the animals have been transferred and we're slowly trying to go through the process of maybe someday making it kind of open to the public, yeah. semi-open, and it'll all be for charity and just for, so we're, we're working on it. So Love we'll it. see. You Love all it. are such an in incredibly generous, gracious household. And so. Well, that's, that's how, you know what? That's how people should be. So I, agree. I, I don't I agree. take that as a compliment. I, I think if you don't do something to help, then shame on you. So. A hundred percent. Jacob Wolf, I know I tell you this all the time. Love I it. love you, dude. Yeah. I really do. This is the absolute. I've done been doing this a long time. I've done a lot of stuff. This is absolutely the best time of my life being able to spend this time with you. We're having a good time. Aww. It's it's been a lot of fun for sure. Thank you. Of course. Yeah. And by the way, put a little product in your hair next. Time. <laughs> by the way, put a little black in your beard. <laughs> go 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 check out go go donate to the Brett Boyer Foundation and go check out Best Bad Influence, the amazing clothing line run by Caroline Bryant. Thank you guys for stopping by. And as always, do something nice for someone. Tell someone you love them. We'll see you next time. We love you guys. Hey, if you like this podcast you just watched, you're going to love the one I'm popping up in your face right now. Check it out.